Okay, so this is the part two of my videos for the kayak. Um, so you're gonna see the motor, it's right over here, it's connected already. Okay, you remember when I speak for the boat, you're gonna see it's going a little over. So if you decide to do the same thing, just drill the hole away. Okay. Same thing here, it's laying over, okay. So, this is Endura 30 uh, Liberty Trust, so this is a, a really good motor. Okay, here is some of the parts that I took away, this is the handle and everything else. So I'm keeping these parts, maybe someday I can use the motor for a different project. Okay, so I'm gonna start first with the uh, electric controls. Cables are coming from here all the way up to here. This is the original part. All of this is the original part. So I have a cable connections you're gonna see them probably underneath the isolation. Okay. I'm using the cable boots or connectors the way you wanna call them. I will have uh, pictures showing what I use. So first I clamp them. No, there was a plastic on top. I remove the plastic, I clamp the cable over and I solder to make sure I have a good connection. So the cable go all the way here and it splits here. This is the battery terminals <clears throat> and I have the controller. So, there was a little hard time finding the correct box um, to use. Probably this is the best one that I can adapt. I wish someday the companies that are making all of these trolling motors, they will have something specifically done for kayaks. Maybe not today, but someday in the future, they probably going to decide to do something about. However, so I will post pictures in this video showing how I did the connection. But I want to mention something before I go there. Uh, I use white cables, two white cables. This is where I have 14 gouges, if I'm not mistaken. This is what I have left over from different projects. So what I did, I have a, I marked them. Which one is the red one, which one is the black one. Even they're white, you can probably see them from here. Okay, uh, uh, I also remember that the yellow cable and I think there was another one black or red um, that I didn't also follow the colors I just mark which cable is which and I connect them correctly over there so the pictures you're going to see the colors will definitely not match the original first so this one is the original switch you see here it's coming from the handle inside just took it out okay so I have uh, five positions okay this is neutral and 34 reverse okay this is a voltmeter why do I need the voltmeter well the voltmeter showing me how much power I get from the solar panels. This is important for me. On the third part on these videos, you're gonna see the solar panels and the battery and everything else. So up to this point, there is nothing, there is no reading here. Okay, so the box is connected here. Underneath there is a flat aluminum bar with two connections. And don't forget, do you remember the original connections that I showed you earlier? They're over here. Okay, 
when I install the switch, I have to bend the terminals underneath. There is no room. It's pretty tight inside. You're gonna see some pictures, the terminals are bended, but they are strong, the connection is good, there is nothing wrong. As long as they're not broken, they will work. Okay? You're gonna see some silicone here, apply silicone to make sure there is no water going inside. There is some silicone here too. Okay, on this side, this is probably more interesting part. Okay, so this is my kill switch. How I did it, okay, you see this red cable over here, goes all the way inside. One part goes in and one part goes out and goes straight to the switch. So when I plug out, there is no power at all. I put this one in, there is a power here. There you go. This is probably the best way Okay, I'm stuck here. So probably this is the best way to do kill switch on kayak. You can apply some electrical grease here and this is gonna make them to work a little more smooth than this. Okay. Let me think, yes, so let me show you how I did all of this. So this one, this is from AC Hardware. It's a pipe connector and this is the hose connector, if I'm not mistaken. So I have to apply some isolation underneath, same as this one from the cable, and silicone. When the silicone dries out, it's pretty strong. If I force it, it will come out, but so far it's so good. This boot <laughs> is from uh, uh, probably, how do they call them? The tables underneath, they have a rubber boots to prevent sliding. This is one of them. I will have also information on in the video, some pictures showing the part numbers, if you decide to buy them and do the same uh, modification as mine. Okay, steering. Steering, this is the most important part, I guess. Okay, let me straight the cables. Pushing this one down, pushing this one down. Okay, as you can see from the top, it's a V-shape. The reason of this is if I have them parallel this way, the boat is gonna hit somewhere here and there is not enough room to steer. So that's why I have to have them in a V-shape. This is um, connection from the bicycle seat. Okay, there are two, you see one and two. One is little bit below, the other one, it's over. I have to modify them to work. There is a little lip. I will have some pictures showing. I have one more part of this. They have to be uh, grinded before, before it goes over the pipe. Okay, so pretty much, okay, let me straight this one, one more time. Okay, so pretty much, it's a 45 degree split. Okay. And how I mentioned, this is the pedals. So now I'm going to connect um, my phone to, to a stand and I'll do some steering. And you're going to see how the electric motor steer.
Okay, I forgot to mention something, the cables. You can buy galvanized cables or you can buy also uh, stainless steel. Just depend your choice. I will have some information for the cables too. There is no big price difference between both of them. Okay, tilting the motor. I see people doing so many different combinations here. This is what I decide to do. I drill a hole over here, you're gonna see it. And I got the rope going underneath through the hole. And this is more important part. Tie must be on the front. Because when you have the tie right over here, there is no room, as you can see. There you go. So I'm pulling the rope and the motor tilts. Okay, here is the cable. I have this one, this guy over here, goes through here, and this is the original uh, tilter bracket or whatever you want to call. I can have the cable going through this part over here or not. So it happened to have this one here, which is okay. Add up this one. And this is the type. So I have a lot of leftover. Uh, as soon as I do the test, I will decide do I need to cut the cable a little bit more or I can just leave it here. Same thing on this side. You see the cable is coming here, goes through there. Okay, another handle. Okay, so another thing that I need to mention. Don't over tie this one too much, you don't need it. Because when you have to remove the motor, you have to remove the handle and you have to take the cable away from here. Otherwise, there is no way to remove the motor, the cable will stuck. Okay, I will do some videos, I will show you how to control the tilt. But before I do this, I want to mention, this is also from the bike seat and this one. So, this cable goes free here and goes free here. And you can see it's moving, okay? But this one, it's tight over the second bracket on top. Okay, you can see this is original from the bike. Okay, this is the same. I'm just using this one for different purpose and this one for different purpose. Okay, so now I'm going to mount the camera again over the stand and I want to show you how I'm controlling the motor, how I'm going to tilt the motor. Okay, so when I pull this, the left one, the orange one, you see what happened. So the motor tilts, right? There you go. Right? I can go this way, pull the rope, and then clamp it down. See? 
it stays it doesn't go down even this one is up it's not locked this one it's locked over here how much can I trust this one well probably will work I'm not sure but I have the second rope this one over here and the second rope controls the holding there I go I pull and I'm gonna have the second rope stretch just to hold the motor and I'm going to release this one and this is gonna lock okay the video shows when I have the camera over the stand shows how this one works by itself this one and why and how I'm using this one this is important if you decide to go only with this one only one cable so the way I have to do it just pull and I lock down over here how stable is this how secure I don't know I prefer to have this one locked and this is going to happen with the help of the second cable to release okay it doesn't matter do you use one cable or two cables you can release the motor only with this there you go okay don't forget something important too let me pull this one again okay when you tilt the motor see the cables are stretched and the pedals are going all the way down here see it doesn't matter where you have and what kind of position you have the, the pedals left over both of them they're gonna slide down if you want to tilt the motor a little more high than this what you have to do you have to have the longer cable so you have to slide down the pedals probably up to here and you may have another restrictor here or if your legs are longer you may don't need this one you can use the entire sliding positions and this is the way how you can tilt more the motor okay let me take this one down okay now I'm going to pull the pedals okay you can see how low is the motor okay if I'm not mistaken when I calculate it's a half inch down the propeller is half inch down from the lowest part I'm sure if I lift the motor a little bit more higher probably inch up still going to work fine because this is not the tram stone like um, power boats when everything is completely flat and the motor is way behind the tram stone so even if I pull the motor at least half inch or inch or maybe inch and a half I'm sure the motor will work fine and will push the kayak really well so now it's time to do uh, the electrical part I will show you um, some more interesting things and I hope you really like what I'm doing thanks for watching my video so this is the end of part two I will have part three showing the electrical thank you one more time for watching my videos